Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, you've figured out how to get it installed and working, but you really don't ha know how to do anything useful with it. You've uh, maybe got inside, taken a look around, but you can't figure out how to maybe get into orbit, you can't figure out how to... Uh, get to the space station, how to go to the moon, or really do anything at all. So this video series is intended to help people just like yourself learn how to do useful things with Orbiter. Now I am in, uh, I am assuming that you're going to watch these videos in order, so if you happen to be coming on my channel uh, here for the first time in this video, you're going to want to stop the video, go back to number one, and work your way forward. Now having said all that, let's uh, jump in and do what we want to do here today. Now this video is going to be a little bit different. Up to this point, we have avoided downloading anything extra into our Orbiter installation. We've been using uh, the, the standard Delta Glider for all of our flying. We've been using the standard MFDs for all of our instrumentation. Now, it's not going to take very long before you're going to want to perhaps look into some of the additional MFDs to help you accomplish things in a more efficient way. Uh, the default MFDs are very capable, and you can do a whole lot with them, but at some point you are going to want to uh, venture out a little bit. Now, I'm going to uh, tackle these uh, one MFD at a time, rather than trying to just uh, unload the kitchen sink on you all at once. Um, I think it's better to just look at one MFD, check it out for a while, learn how it works, and then you know make that part of your... Uh, make that part of your tool set and then later on go on to another MFD. So we'll inter so I'll introduce a new MFD just one at a time. Here in the first video, I think I'm going to I think a good starting point is to introduce burn time calculator MFD. It's a very useful MFD. I use it on almost every single one of my flights. It's very rare that I don't use it and it's very capable. It, it's a simple MFD but it has just a couple of features that are just extremely useful and once, you, uh, once you've learned how to do the basic orbital mechanics, how to raise your orbit, how to lower your orbit, how to uh, circularize your orbit and all these types of things, it really uh, becomes unnecessary to do those things manually all the time. You know, sometimes it's easier to just do it manually but it's more realistic actually to program in a, a burn and then have the computer carry out that burn at a precise time. Um, as you can imagine in the real world, in real space flight, it's not like you have the uh, commander or pilot or whomever sitting there in the chair of the space shuttle waiting for a certain number to appear on a screen and then they press the gas on the floor. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So let's introduce uh, burn time calculator here as the first MFD. Let me go ahead and switch cameras over to the big view here so you can see my whole screen. And before we introduce the MFD inside of Orbiter, let's first of all explain how to get it and how to install it. Uh, you, can get, uh, you can get Burn Time Calculator MFD from OrbitHanger.com and I will put this link in the description so that you don't have to look for it yourself. But if you do search for it, just come over here to OrbitHanger.com and in the quick search, type in burn time calculator, hit enter, and it'll be, you know, in that first page of results. It'll be result number one or two. And what you're looking for is burn time calculator 2.32. Uh, now, it's kind of worth noting that I actually use a custom version of burn time calculator. So uh, most of the time when you see me in Orbiter, you'll see that my burn time calculator looks slightly different. But for the sake of these explanations here in this video, I will be using the default burn time calculator that you can get from orbithanger.com so that everything looks exactly the same. Uh, you download from burn time, you download from Orbit Hanger simply by scrolling to the bottom and clicking here on the download link. You may be tempted to try to click uh, the file over here, but if you do that, that just gives you a list of the files. It doesn't actually download it. So you'll want to click the download link here, and I recommend saving it somewhere obvious and simple like to your desktop which is like I have here. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you to know how to manage files on your computer and know how to manage folders. I, I, I can't get into that in all these videos. It's just beyond the scope. So once you have 
the the zip file you know you'll double click on it to open it now installing it is quite simple um, there's four folders inside of the zip file plus a text file so let's just go through these uh, one at a time the add-on docs is quite simply uh, just the documentation for burn time calculator so we probably want that the modules folder this is the key this is actually this is the actual add-on itself you have to have this it's required so if we just take a look at that you can see it's just one single file in there the orbiter SDK you do not need unless you plan on doing development work of some kind most people if, it, if you're not a C programmer and you don't have a compiler installed and you don't have all that stuff installed then the fact is you don't need this and you really don't even want to bother with it uh, the scenarios is up to you if you want to install that you can you really don't need it so all we actually need out of this zip file is the add-on docs and the modules and technically uh, if you don't want to read the docs and I, I recommend that you do read them but if you don't want to read them then technically all you need is this modules directory now to install it quote unquote uh, into orbiter the, the way you install it is just to drag the folder from the zip file into your orbiter 2010 directory and let go it's that simple that's all there is to it there's no setup.exe there's no install there's nothing like that for the most part anytime you download an add-on for orbiter uh, by and large most of them are going to be installed this way now there are some uh, there are some add-ons particularly Dan Steff's add-ons like orbiter sound and the uh, universal cars and cargo those actually have an executable that you have to run but we'll, we'll touch on that at some other time most of the most of the add-ons that you get will be installed in this manner you'll just go into the zip file and you'll either take all the contents and drag it into your orbiter folder which would be just fine or if you happen to know like in this case and for burn time calculator the only thing that we technically need is this modules and it's a good idea to install the add-ons as well so once you drag the add the modules over then you would drag the add-ons over uh, the add-on doc over as well and voila it's installed so that's all there is to installing so let's go ahead and close that out now once it's once you have the modules directory copied over to your orbiter directory let me take a sip of water the um, the add-on isn't going to just appear in orbiter uh, by itself you have to go into your orbiter launch pad by just simply you know executing the orbiter shortcut and go to modules and you'll have this list of course your if your installation is new your list will be much smaller than mine but go down the list until you see this miscellaneous uh, subset of modules and you want to click the checkbox next to this one that says burn time calculator which I've already done here and that's how you activate all modules and that's how you deactivate modules if there's any other module that you want to activate you would click the checkbox and then uncheck anything that you want to deactivate once you have that activated then you can start any scenario you like and test out uh, you know test things out to make sure that uh, burn time calculator is installed and working for you now assuming that you're not assuming you don't have any problems getting to that point getting the modules getting the zip file downloaded getting the modules folder copied over to your orbiter directory coming into parameters and checking that assuming you don't have any problems doing that then we will now take a look at how you can actually use burn time calculator to do useful things in orbiter so let me come into this uh, directory that I have started to set up here just for my purpose one of the first things that we can use burn time calculator for is basic orbit circularization so this will apply to every single flight basically every time you take off from earth and get into orbit or really every time you take off from any body and get into orbit one of your highest priorities after getting into orbit is to circularize the orbit and we talked about how to do that way back in the first uh, parts of the absolute beginner guide parts one and two and then later on we talked about you know raising and lowering the orbit so the, by now circularizing the orbit is a very simple task and everybody should know how to do that so let's look at how we can use burn time calculator to do that for us in, in a more automated way first of all when do we circularize our orbit 
Remember, we, we circularize our orbit when we get to apoapsis. So what we can do in burn time calculator is we can change, here it says uh, time to periapsis, and we can press this MD button so it'll toggle over to time to apoapsis, and you'll notice if we press it again, it goes time to manual start, and if we press it again, it goes back to time to periapsis. We want to circularize our orbit when we get to apoapsis, so we want to press MD until it says time to apoapsis, and notice that it's counting down the same as over here. Uh, APT matches this value. Now we want to press the uh, circularization button here, and this will begin the countdown for the time to ignition. So in 1,436 seconds, burn time calculator is going to automatically uh, engage the main engines and circularize our orbit. Now, the only catch here is that you have to be in the prograde position before you get to this point. This, this, calc uh, this MFD will not automatically orient your vessel for you. Now, basically, we're, autom we're almost prograde at the moment, but Translation. oftentimes when you get into orbit and then, you know, you fast forward time a bit, your, your vessel's going to get a little bit out of alignment like it is now. You can see now we're quite a bit off from prograde. So if we were to just continue fast forwarding time to this point, then when the engine's engaged, we would be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't circularize our orbit very well because we're facing in the wrong direction. So all we have to do is just warp time forward until we are maybe 100 seconds away from time to ignition. Let me just go ahead and do that now. And the reason I say 100 seconds again is because we need to give the autopilot time. We need to give the autopilot time to settle. So I'm slowing time down so I don't overshoot this point. And you can see we're only a few seconds away here. Let's go ahead and go back to real time now that we're at 100 and let's go to the prograde position. Now, of course, I could have gone to the prograde position earlier and warped time forward for that whole 900 seconds with the prograde autopilot on. But remember, we don't like to do that because the prograde autopilot uses a little bit of fuel. It uses those RCS thrusters, the, uh, uses the RCS thrusters to keep the vessel uh, pointed at prograde. So if I were to have warped time forward for 900 seconds, with the prograde autopilot on, then it would have just used uh, fuel that is not necessary. So I warped time forward till I got to 100 seconds, then turned the prograde autopilot on, and now we're all set. We're in the proper position, and burn time calculator is armed, and it's going to do a, th it's going to burn the full power of the main engines for 3.031 seconds. It even tells us how long this burn's going to be. And this is actually more efficient because it, the most efficient way to do your burns is to do the burn all at once. If you, if, if you could, in theory, do the entire burn in, in, a, in a single microsecond, that would be the most efficient way to do it. But we can't do that because engine tech, engines just can't do that, and plus the inertia would probably kill the pilots. But So we have to slowly bring the engines up to speed and then cut them. But using burn time calculator lets the computer calculate how much time the engines need to burn for and it, it's just it makes for a more efficient burn so let's look at our PEA over here it's 31.60 APA is 303.2 and here the time to ignition is in 5 4 my hands are off the keyboard 2 1 0 and there it goes it's burning it cuts the engines and now we have a periapsis of 203.1 and an apoapsis of 203.5 and you can see our eccentricity which is a, uh, a gauge of how circular our orbit is. You can see it's 0 0.0000. Now, burn time calculator often won't have these exactly to the uh, uh, tenth place of the you know, kilometers, but nevertheless, it's very accurate and it's very useful. So hopefully that is easy to understand. I don't really think it's necessary to show that example multiple times. I, if you have any problems understanding that, simply rewind the video a bit and watch it again and you'll be just fine. So let's take a look then at a second example of how we can use burn time calculator to do something that would be useful. So let's go back into this folder that I got set up here and we're going to load this second scenario. 
another way that we can use burn time calculator is to help us with our rendezvous. Remember back when we did the rendezvousing with the ISS, I said that the way the absolute beginner can determine when to begin the braking process for coming up to the uh, target body, uh, such as the ISS, would be to uh, start the burn, test it, see how things go, then stop the burn, then start the burn, then stop the burn. Go back to that video if you don't know what I'm talking about and just watch it again. But again, doing that type of testing and shutting the engines off and turning them back, that's not really efficient. It, again, the most efficient way to do any burn is to do the burn all at once and to use as much power as you possibly can. And we can't really do those calculations in our head very well. So we either have to sit down with pen and paper and slide rules and who, whatever else and figure all that out, or we have to use uh, something like Burn Time Calculator. Now, I personally think that using something like Burn Time Calculator is actually much you know, besides the fact that it's much easier, it's, it's a bit more realistic too, especially these days, you know, with the computer technology that we have, I don't really think that in space they're playing with pencils and graph paper anymore like they did back in the Apollo days. And actually, even back then, they didn't really do that. The guys on the ground did it, and they relayed the information back up to the guys um, that were actually in, in space. So this time, instead of worrying about time to periapsis or time to apoapsis, we don't need either of those because we're not, this, this burn isn't going to be determined by when we reach periapsis or apoapsis. This burn is going to be done basically, let's call it manually. So what we can do here is just press MD until we have time to manual start. And that way, you don't even really have to do that, but that just gets rid of that counter so it doesn't confuse you. Now we are approaching the ISS at 203.8 meters per second. It's actually speeding up slightly. You can see we're not 204 meters per second. This particular flight was done uh, a long time ago by me, and we actually have a quite eccentric orbit, relatively speaking. Uh, instead of having a nice, low, uh, slow approach to the ISS, we actually have our apoapsis way out to 1.1 a thousand kilometers so by the time we come back around and are approaching the ISS we're, we're going pretty quick so I'm going to use uh, again burn time calculator to help me determine and what I want to know simply is how long will it take me to eliminate 204 point uh, let's you know you can see this number is climbing slightly so let's round up to 205 at the moment but what I want to know is how long is it going to take me to eliminate 205 meters per second worth of delta V. Because the point here is that if I'm going to rendezvous with the ISS, I need to basically be, relative to the ISS, I need to be moving at zero meters per second by the time I get up to the ISS. If I'm moving at 204 meters a second by the time I'm up to the ISS, then what's going to happen is I'm just going to go, I'm going to fly right by it. So by the time I get to the ISS, I want my relative velocity, I want this number over here to be zero. But I don't want to zero it out while I'm still 40 meter, four, or rather 40 kilometers from the ISS, because that's way far away. 40 kilometers is a good distance. So by the time my distance is zero, I want my relative velocity to be zero. So how long will it take me to eliminate this much velocity? I don't know, but burn time calculator can tell me. So I'm gonna go back to real time here, and I'm gonna press DV, and I'm simply gonna type in that number and I'm just gonna round it up a couple meters per second because I can see that's climbing. So let's say 210 meters per second. Now let me pause just for a moment so I can explain things because I am approaching the ISS rather quickly. So I put in a target delta V of 210 meters a second. Now what does all this gobbledygook mean? Well, first of all, everything down here in the, in the somewhat hard to read blue can be completely ignored. This information up here is our, is our relevant information. This says that in order to eliminate 210 meters per second, remember because I rounded up a few meters per second because we are speeding up a bit. In order to eliminate 210 meters per second, I need to begin my braking burn when I am 1.188 kilometers from the ISS if I use the full power of the main engines. Note here that the engine type is main. This is important. If I wanted to do this burn using the retro engines, because we did talk about how to do, you know, to where you could be facing your target, 
and use the retro engines instead, then it would be a much different number because the retro engines aren't nearly as powerful. So let's actually take a look at that. Let's press F8. Uh, let's unpause rather. Let's press F8. Let's go down to the bottom panel. And the retro doors, they are open. So let me come back over to this larger view and let me switch engines here. But, and I can switch engines by clicking the ENG button. And I go to hover and now I go to retro. Let me pause again. Now what this is telling me is that in order to eliminate 210 meters per second worth of velocity, I need to begin the burn when I'm 3.343 kilometers, excuse me, when I'm 5.590 kilometers from the ISS. And I know how far I am from the ISS because it it's, gives me that information right here. So I have those two options and technically if I wanted to, I could put the Delta glider on its tail and I could use the hover engines for braking as well, but that's uh, very, I think that's well beyond the scope of an absolute beginner task, so we won't even think about that. So I got the, I have those two choices. I can use the retro engines or I can use the main engines. In this case, just to show how this works, we'll go ahead and use, we'll go ahead and use the uh, retro engines. So I'll press Control P to unpause. Translation. Rotate. And let me get rotated toward the ISS, toward the velocity vectors, in fact. Okay, there we have it. Now all I have to do to to accomplish this burn is wait until the distance is at that number and then I can just click burn. Simply as, simple as that. Uh, alternately I can engage the engines uh, manually but I won't do that. I'll go ahead and use the uh, BRN button, the burn button. So let's warp time forward till we get closer to this point. Let's get about down to 10 kilometers like that and let's come back to real time and let's just make sure that everything is centered up properly it is well that will be in a second when I stop making typing mistakes okay there we are very well uh, lined up so now I'm watching this number or that number and when it's 5.59 or close to it we're very close five and burning so I press the burn button and it's now eliminating that velocity and you can see I'm closing in on the ISS there's the ISS, and once I have eliminated 210 meters per second, these engines will turn off automatically. If necessary, I can do a little bit of this rotation while I'm doing this burn, just to keep myself on the velocity vector. You can see we still have 26 seconds of our engine burn to do. We're 900 meters out from the ISS. Three hundred meters from the ISS. Eight seconds left on the burn. One hundred meters from the ISS, and we can even kill the engines a little bit early if we want because we did uh, put in. I did. I did not kill the engines early, but we could have <clears throat> because I put in a little bit of extra delta V, so I could have pressed the asterisk key if need be. But now we're only one hundred and seventy-seven meters from the ISS, and we're moving. Uh, we're moving away from it at 0.33 meters per second. So at this point, to uh, finish getting everything set up with the ISS, we just would rotate toward it. And again, we know where it's at because those uh, the triangles point to it. And you can see we basically stopped right here next to the ISS. And now I can just put in a little bit of translation to zero out the remaining velocity there. And there we are, we're basically at a dead stop right here by the ISS. Now, one thing you might wanna do, uh, I, I cut that really close, obviously. One thing you might wanna do as an absolute beginner, when, the, when it tells you that you have a three point, like I think there was like 3.59 kilometers, you might wanna engage the engines when you're at four kilometers. That way you stop in front of the ISS with a couple of hundred meters, to, well, more, with more than this to spare, you would maybe be a, a half a kilometer in front of the ISS. That way, you know, you don't run the risk of accidentally engaging the engines too late and running yourself through the ISS. And I do not have to take that, fortunately, so let me just ignore that. 
Okay, so that's another example of how to use burn time calculator. And let's go with uh, a couple more examples here before we wrap up this video. Let's look at the uh, let's look at how to do an orbit insert. If you go back to the uh, moon video, which actually hasn't been posted yet because I'm recording this video before that one's been uploaded. But by the time you see this one, that one will have already been uploaded. When we get out to the moon and we need to do the uh, LOI burn, the lunar orbit insertion burn, we get down to periapsis, then we turn our vessel retrograde and we engage the main engines until we, until we uh, are in a circular orbit around the moon. Well, again, here again, we can use burn time calculator to do that uh, job for us. So let's go ahead and bring burn time calculator up and it's already set to time to periapsis which is exactly what we want it to be set at because we're going to do the burn we're going to do our LOI burn at periapsis but if for any reason it's on something else like uh, actually it can't be on anything else apparently because we have a hyperbolic trajectory so it's set where it needs to be set now the engine type for this is going to be main we could use hover or we could use retro but the retro doors have to be open but for this type of uh, braking burn, it makes a lot more sense to use the main engine. So we're definitely going to do that. Now here again, we're just going to press the uh, circularization button, just like we did when we were when we left Earth and we were getting uh, our initial circular orbit established after taking off. We're basically doing the same thing here, but sort of in reverse. Um, you know, we're coming up to the target body, which is the moon and we want to get into a circular orbit around the moon so we can uh, have BTC do that job for us. Now that's 4,000 seconds out, so definitely going to want to warp time forward. And this is going to require a 45, almost a 46 second burn. So let's just warp time forward till we get closer to that point. Careful not to overshoot. We're at about 1,000 seconds. Go down obviously quite a bit more. And when we get near the time to do the burn, we want to uh, come back to real time like usual. Now that we're down to a couple hundred seconds, we'll go to 10x just to be safe. And when we get to 100 seconds or thereabout, we will go to the retrograde position. Okay, we're close enough. Let's go to the retrograde position to give the autopilot time to settle. You can see I actually probably should have done that even a little bit sooner because we're coming up very close to the time to ignition. And that's it. We are done. Now, from this point forward, the uh, burn time calculator will take care of this, this circularization for us. Now, one thing I will point out, our PEA is 15.98, and our APA, uh, you know, once the burn is done, probably will be a little bit different than our PEA. And the reason for that, um, burn time calculator is good, but the one thing that it, that it doesn't do, since it doesn't align since it doesn't align the position for you, it relies on these, you know, retrograde and prograde autopilot positions. And it's better technically when you're when you're doing a big burn like this to be slightly off uh, one way or the other when you're doing these large burns. And burn time calculator doesn't take that into account. So these larger circularizations don't come out as cleanly as they do uh, with the simpler circularizations. But here we are, it's doing the burn for us. And we've got a 40 second burn. We can even time warp through this. It's no big deal since we don't have to worry about sh overshooting. Uh, BTC will cut the engines for us. So you can see here the burn's coming up in a couple of seconds, or it's going to end in a couple seconds, and it's done. And this is what I was talking about. You can see now that the burn is done, we've got a PEA of 14.33 and an APA of 16.05, and our ECC is not completely perfect. And it, this is more than good enough, by the way. It's it don't think that this is a problem by any stretch but an even more sophisticated MFD will take into account the the yaw alignment during these types of maneuvers so that uh, by the time the burn is complete your PEA and APA will be uh, even closer than what they are here and this what I'm talking about here becomes more of a problem when you get when you use it for larger burns here at the moon it's a fairly small circularization burn for the lunar orbit insertion, so this works pretty well. But when we go back to Earth from the moon, for example, to do this type of maneuver 
and use burn time calculator, your PEA and APA will be uh, off by even more than they are here because breaking at the earth is a much larger burn. So that's just something to keep in mind that uh, you might want to start with your PEA a little bit higher than you would otherwise if you plan to use burn time calculator to do the burn for you. Okay, now the video is already 30 minutes. I'm going to try to get to a couple of more examples because I'm trying to keep my videos to 30 minutes these days. But I do want to explain, you know, several examples how we can use this. So let's bring up another example here. Let's look at a, a breaking burn. Uh, this is fairly similar to how we did our, our breaking coming up to the ISS. But in this case, we're going to do breaking our breaking burn for coming up to Brighton Beach as our landing process. So here we are 2,000 kilometers away from Brighton Beach and we're closing in at 1,678 meters per second. And let's uh, bring up burn time calculator on this side because map MFD will be more useful. And again we don't need periapsis or apoapsis, what we need is just a manual burn. We're going to do the burn. We're going to input manual information. And what I want to know is when I get to Brighton Beach, I need to be going at zero meters per second uh, in terms of how fast I'm moving across the lunar surface. And this is very simple to imagine. I mean, if you're coming up to a stop at a stop sign, by the time you get to that stop sign, you need to be moving, or let's say a red light even, you need to be moving at zero meters per second because if you're not, then you're going to go, phew, you're going to go right through this the red light and potentially crash into other cars, and it's going to be very bad. So by the time we get to Brighton Beach, we need to be, uh, we need this number to be zero. But if we start slowing down too soon, then we're going to end up here, and we're going to be, we're going to be at a dead stop, and we're going to be, you know, hundred or a uh, thousand kilometers still away from the base. Again, going back to our car analogy. If you're coming up to a red light and you can see that the red light is still a quarter mile away, you don't come to a dead stop there a quarter mile away because that would be stupid. You would have cars behind you honking their horn and, you know, why, why would you come to a stop that, that far in front of the red light? There's no point. So we don't want to come to a stop until we are at Brighton Beach, but we want to, uh, what we, we want to start with the braking process before we get to that point obviously because if we wait till we're all the way to Brighton Beach and then begin breaking then we'll go past it. So the way that we can use burn time calculator for this uh, first of all as, as you're coming up to Brighton Beach you're going to want to Rotation. Uh, you're going to want to be wings level with the ground so we first need to roll over this is exactly what we did in our other video and then we want to point to the retrograde position and we need to be, we want the uh, horizon level autopilot to be on, but we'll wait until we're much closer to the base. But before we get to that point, let's put in this number here into our delta V. So DV is going to be 1679. That's 1,679 meters per second. Now, according to burn time calculator, in order to eliminate this much velocity, using the full power of the main engines. It's very, very important that we don't miss this point because if we have this set to hover or if we have this set to retro, then it is a very different number. So always check which engine you're using. So again, to eliminate this much velocity using the full power of the main engines, we have to begin braking when we are 72.083 kilometers from, from Brighton Beach. Now, the map MFD doesn't uh, give us uh, quite as fine of a number as we can get if we bring up like if we bring up like VOR VTOL and this won't come online till we're 500 kilometers out so let's go ahead and warp time forward till we're within 500 kilometers of the base okay there we are we're within 500 kilometers of the base now I'm not going to land because I just want to show how this works and I'm not going to worry about lining up with the base here either at the end because we've already covered that in the other video. We're just going to, I'm just wanting to show how burn time calculator works. So we're uh, at the retrograde position. We'll go level. We'll engage the horizon level. We'll press the, uh, we'll press H so that we have surface moon. Now I'm watching this number here, distance. This is distance from the base. 
when this number matches this number, then we want to press the BRN, burn, uh, BRN button on, uh, on burn time calculator MFD, or we could actually engage the engines manually. But if we press the BRN button, then it will automatically uh, shut off the engines at the proper time also. So we've still got a little bit of ways to go, so let's go ahead and press T to warp time forward to get closer to that point, being careful not to overshoot. Now these numbers are clicking down, ticking by so fast that you want to be ready to press the BRN button when you see that when you see this get to about 75 kilometers, have your mouse over here and be ready to go, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is a uh, right shift B, but we'll we'll just click the button. So warping time forward. And we're getting very close, so I'll come back to real time here in just a second. There we are. Now, ready to go with the burn. 82, 81, and again, when this is about 72.08, so we'll say 73, and burning. Now, it's going to burn all the way down uh, for 80 seconds until our velocity is completely eliminated. And since we start falling immediately, since we're slowing down, I'll also engage the, at the altitude hold so that we don't sink all the way down and crash into the ground. But you can see then what's happening is that as our distance to the base gets closer, our horizontal speed is decreasing. And of course, we didn't line up perfectly with the base this time, so we're going to be a bit off. But again, we already covered that in another video. So I can go ahead and warp time forward to get through this burn more quickly. And we're almost there. Five more seconds on the burn. And of course, my hands are off all this time. Burn is complete, and we are now basically at a dead stop, close to it, sitting here uh, at the moon, just hovering, and the base is right over there. So we obviously needed to do a bit of a base alignment. But now all we have to do to land on the base is rotate over there toward the base and then move forward and just briefly show how that would work. You know, just a bit of rotation so we can point toward the base. And there we can see the base in front of us. Use a little bit of the main engine. That'll get us over there more quickly. And we could even do, we could even use burn time calculator again here since we are so far away. So I'm moving now at 137 meters per second. So I can say DV 138, let's round it up. And I need 467 meters. Uh, and I want to actually be using retro at this point so let's open the retro doors so let me switch engine type to retro since i'm facing forward and i need 2.2 kilometers to slow down so when this number is 2.2 then i will engage uh, i will press the brn button translation rotation. just get rotated here want to have the uh, yellow arrow facing you know the direction of flight so watching this here for two point, uh, basically 2.2. .2. Getting ready to engage. Let's go, let's warp time forward a little bit. We're almost there. Again, we're looking at about 2.2. Seven, six, five, four, three, to gauge the engines. My hands are off and we're now doing another braking burn as we close, on, close in on Brighton Beach. And by the time our velocity is zero, we should be more or less right next to the base here. And the engines will shut off automatically. So then all we have to do to actually land is just, you know, hover down and land on the landing pad. And because we weren't perfectly lined up, we are overshooting just a bit. But you can see more or less we are now at a complete dead stop right here next to the base. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. There was one other example I was going to show, but since I'm well over the 30-minute mark now, I'm going to say that's good enough. And I think these examples really are sufficient at this point. This will at least give you a good idea of how to do uh, you know, several different tasks with... Uh, with burn time calculator. Uh, there are other ways to use it, like if you're going to go to Phobos, for example, and as you're closing in on Phobos, it's really no different than closing in on the ISS. So you can use burn time calculator to help you determine uh, when to begin your braking burn. 
uh, for closing in on Phobos and things like that. Uh, if you liked this video, if you found it useful, uh, definitely, definitely leave me some comments on this video since it's a bit different than things I've done before. Let me know if you like these types of educational videos um, more or equal to the flights that I do, and I'll definitely do more videos like this, introduce other MFDs like Base Sync, introduce other MFDs like Aerobrake MFD, and show you how to get uh, a little bit of use. I'm by no means an expert on these MFDs. There are undoubtedly other things that you can do with them, but for the various flights that I do, uh, this is the way that I use these MFDs, and I think I think they're very I think they're incredibly useful. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, tell me so and hit the don't like button. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Check out my Facebook page. I post all my videos there. I also put up different pictures, uh, post cool articles that I run into, uh, post different videos that I see, space-related content. Occasionally I'll see Orbiter videos from somebody else. I'll put that on my Facebook channel as well. So definitely look for the link for that in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next video.